and welcome to Tuku Talks, the podcast where we talk about stuff that matters. Te rangatahi, I'm one of your hosts, Janae Henry. I'm your other host, Sudia schmidt Picky. And we're currently sitting in a car park in the boots of our cars, the best way to talk to any and all of your friends. The co-papa of today's episode is social media and politics and the way those two things interact. And so we have a very special guest in the boot of their car sitting with us. We've got Kura Turu Whenua. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I know you personally in real life. I just want to let the listeners know straight up top. I'm biased because I'm a real big fan of yours. Yeah. So anything you say, I'm co-signing it already at the top. Can you introduce yourself to the listener who may not be privy to the friendship I have with you? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Kura. I'm a Outside of this car park, I'm actually a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Um, work in TV and do things on social media as well. Um, Janae, you and I, I think the first time we actually met was in another car park. <laughs> we were doing a gig in a car park. It not this was. car park, a different and one. Not this gig, no. but... Yeah. We were doing stand-up comedy in a car park, because that's... Our friendship feels the most real to me when we're in a car park. <laughs> that's where I need to be. I can't talk to you outside of a car park. Like, yeah. we, we just don't talk outside. And of we're it. never in our cars either. We're always sort of... Just walk by on the street, eh? Just yeah. walk past each yeah. other, but exactly. in car parks. Exactly. They're on. <laughs> Let's get into it, because we're talking about social media and politics. So firstly, Kura, what do you reckon social media and politics is? What is that? For the listener who is like, what? Social media and politics, I guess it's just the discussion of politics using social media, whether that's memes or videos or text posts, you know, whatever you can put on social media, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, oh, that's correct. That's, so that's, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you think social media has sort of like changed the political game, if at all? I think that social media has made politics accessible to way more people than it ever was. And also um, probably more uh, lenses that can be explored. Um, you're not just dependent on what is in a newspaper or what is in on TV or what politicians are telling you in our country or even what your family are telling you. You can kind of outsource your politics a lot easier um, and you can get international opinions a lot easier as well. What, sorry, where do you think you've like sort of sourced your political beliefs from? Probably uh, my upbringing. Um, being raised Māori definitely has big influences and in how I look at the world yeah. um, but it's changed it's changed where they've come from when I was younger it was from my family and then when I was in high school it started being from the internet which was interesting <laughs> <laughs> and then now it's probably a mix of the internet my university studies um, and my family still actually yeah Oh, and the people I surround myself with, like friends and stuff like that, yeah. It's so like more of a melting pot now, maybe, than it was when you were younger? I think that the melting pot was always there, but I wasn't smart enough to recognise it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically. You sort of said that when you started learning about politics from the internet when you were younger, that was interesting. Yeah. What does that yeah. mean? <laughs> you said it in a voice. When yeah, I said it in a voice, and <laughs> this is going to be problematic voice. Um, in high school, I was low-key, like, had some real sus opinions about um, a lot of things. Um, I went to an all-girls Catholic school, and when you're Māori and you're the only student of maybe, like, three that are brown, it, you're kind of, um, oh, straight off the bat, you're already ostracized and your um, life view will already be kind of different and so I think when I was using internet spaces that were they were funny and I think that's the thing is that it was a lot of memes and a lot of like groups and things like that and um, to me I was just in these spaces that were kind of funny and poking fun at different groups and like feminists and like oh feminist gets wrecked by 
freaking Jordan Peterson. <laughs> and 17-year-old uh, me was like, that's it. That's the guy. He's the man. <laughs> and, um, I think it, it sort of um, came from, a, I think, a place where I didn't really have anyone around me to tell me that's messed up. Um, and it's not like something I would ever really talk to people about either because it wasn't something that I would <laughs> seek other people's opinions on anyway. Um, yeah, so I think I had some real weird ideas about the world back then that I don't carry anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Was that just from what you saw on social media at that age? or was like... Yeah. Well, the thing is that I think um, just seeing it is a bit more passive than it actually was because I was engaging in it. Yeah. Like I wanted to be in those spaces because they were where I got happiness from and community from, but with the most... Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, you can swear. Oh, with the most uh, people yeah, possible. Yeah. <laughs> like, because the people in those kind of spaces who have certain ideas about people of colour and women, let alone trans women or anyone outside yeah. of that binary. All those minority um, groups. Are, exactly. Yeah. People that um, are always going to be against those groups. When you find community in them, it's only, um, you only get that community when you are engaged in it. But the moment you start saying, maybe this isn't, actually yeah, bad, against, uh, yeah. they will immediately turn on you because you are still part of those groups that they do not want to associate with. Yeah. Oh. This is like a bit of a pivot boomerang, but I'm just going to go with it. It's really interesting that you talked about like being a part of those groups of like messed up people. You kind of have to like, <laughs> I guess, self-deprecate in a way to like be a part of it. And that's interesting to me because you're a stand-up comic and I've seen you on stage and I know that a common device for stand-up comics can be to be self-deprecating. But I don't think you are on stage. I don't no. think you are at all. Is that an active choice? I think that I don't self-deprecate on stage because I don't self-deprecate off stage. Yeah. yeah. Um, but back when I was in high school and in those spaces, I did self-deprecate a lot. And a lot of it was to do with like, oh, I'm Māori, blah, 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 Māori this, Māori that. And it, other people will find it funny, and I would kind of find it funny, but it would always be like gnawing at me like, yeah. this is f***ed up. <laughs> this is, why am I wanting friends with these people? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. And um, even like sort of shitting on a other woman was another thing. Yeah. And it was like, oh my God, these feminists um, doing this and that and blah 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 and it's like I didn't have a single original thought in my brain <laughs> like, <laughs> like, um, but yeah I think back to the self-deprecating thing now is like I've done it and I've felt what the consequence of it is so I don't need to do it anymore yeah especially not on a stage when I'm representing Maori people and wahine Maori just as a consequence of me, myself, being one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, like, sort of fly you back now to the online space. Yeah, yeah. I see you <laughs> reposting, both of you, actually. This is you two, Tudia. I see you reposting, like, political things all the time. You can define what political things are. Um, anything that has a message, which is everything this does. Can you talk to me a bit about that? Like, when you're reposting something that has a bit of, like, a political agenda, what's happening in the mind? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, what are you thinking? Are you actively engaging with it or are you, like, mean repost? Sometimes it will just be like, cool, I agree with that, let's reshare it. Yeah. Sometimes I have to think a bit before I repost things because I don't like reposting things or posting anything that I am not uh, fully invested in. Or yeah. Like, if I felt... Um, <laughs> I didn't fully understand the kākāpā or I didn't or I wasn't actually doing anything other than just reposting something yeah. then sometimes I'd feel less comfortable to act as a sort of springboard for that kōrero whatever it may be yeah yeah I mean I didn't okay me and Janae always have this I always say that I don't know politics but she's like you do know it like <laughs> so you political. keep the things you do is political and I'm just like oh I don't I still don't know I guess I share things like um 
Yes, I mean, it depends on what mood. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, shit, and then sometimes I'm just, like, very passionate. I will say I post a lot on my close friends, I, like, opinionated things, just because I'm not too good at articulating myself. And just because so many people have so many opinions on, you know, and they come from different things, I'm just like... Oh. I'm giving you the evils, because you're really good at articulating yourself. Uh, yeah, and, like, my code words. Like, yeah, mm. I don't know. Some things, um... Some things I feel very, very strongly about, especially mm -hmm. like representation of like our people in yep. all aspects of life, like those things, you know. Those politics. Yeah, those, those <laughs> politics. Yeah. yeah. Tori, I'm about to put you in the hot seat. Ooh, yes. Okay, so we argue about this a lot. <laughs> you don't think it, that you're political, way. Eh? Nah. I, I guess because at school there was never a subject that was like politics or. Yeah. Yeah, I just never thought I've known politics, but very opinionated, which Janae has been teaching me my opinions are mostly political. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess. Can you talk about like, I don't know if I'm in the, like, I don't want to expose your close friends, I, cause I see quite a few of your stories. So oh, I, you can explain, I think, yeah, yeah, that's all good. Can you talk about some of the things you post and then we're gonna like, maybe Kura and I will sort of rate their politicalness from not political at all to what I would what do you do? <laughs> I mean... The two spectrums. Oh, okay. Hot seat. Um, things that I post. I mean, I post... Uh, res I mean, I post a lot about... I mean, I guess it's all political. I post a lot about, like, um, like pop culture, like Kardashian kind of things. Like, I find all of that, like the Kanye West, Kim Kardashian... I know, probably not the politics the listeners are probably expecting. But, you know, just, like, their take on that situation. Like, would that be... Is that political? Just to kind of like how Kanye West was harassing Kim Kardashian, but I think the Kardashians actually do, do like detrimental damage to males that come into their family. Like, I guess it is, yeah. It sounds political now that I say it. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. We don't need it. I mean, need to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, closer to home, I feel like just mostly like the petition to change New Zealand to Aotearoa. I mean, those things that I know, like when it belongs to the government or under a political party, I, obviously I'm not. That's political. But I think, and I, and I hope there are other people who feel this way too, I think it's just hard to... Well, like you said, everything is political, eh? If there, do you think if there's a different opinion to something, that's... Is that politics? Just if there's a different, two different opinions or more, is that, does that make it... Political. Yeah, I don't know where you sit on this, Kuda, and I'll be interested to find out. For me, I think everything is inherently political. I think every choice is quite political. I think us two hosting a podcast is political. Like, I think every every choice feels in some way political to me. I don't know. How do you feel about it? Um, my way of understanding it for myself is that the way that we view the world and the way that we experience the world is political. So the fact that we're speaking English right now, the fact that we have to wear clothes <laughs> is political, the fact that we need to wear makeup for camera is political. It's like hey. everything is a, is a choice and is an understanding that we have made together is a culture of what is normal, what is not normal, everything. Cool. Okay, yeah, I, I think that sounds a bit more, okay, yeah. Well, because I'm, like, when sort of the whole internet sort of really slated um, Ye Kanye for a bit, and uh, sort of both sides, I, I don't know, I'm not super in the Kardashian world, but I was like, yeah, some of Kanye's behaviour seems concerning. Um, but equally, I think the internet finds it really easy to ostracise a black man. Yeah, and, and a mental illness. Black yeah, man, you know, like it's highlighted. Right. So, like the fact that you are choosing to talk about that on your space, your platform, your stage, your lounge, is political. Yeah, I guess, yes, I agree actually. Because then you, people definitely message me and they're like, "Why'd you say that?" <laughs> I'm like, "Cause I thought it." Because <laughs> like, not that I thought it. Like I shared it. Like, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You also well, now I'm gonna be like I'm so political like to you my are. friends. I'm gonna be like yeah, just yeah. I've had an awakening, <laughs> a political awakening. Nick Murray, 2035. I'm in the Maori party now. I know, I know. I'm, like, I'm not. The Beehive would not let me in. <laughs> I reckon they would. The Beehive. That's very beehive. political. 
I don't know if I'd... Is that something you would like... Would you ever want to actually, at any moment, could you see yourself being a politician? No. Sure. <laughs> nah. It just sounds not fun. Yeah. Nah. I mean, you kind of argue all day a little bit. Some days. Yeah. I think uh, work, there's though. just way better people <laughs> that do more for their communities and understand their people better. I don't... I've never thought of myself in politics, but I like talking about it. Like it? Yeah, no, no. I, no. I feel like you can't always say everything you want to say in politics. Like, I don't think the beehive is like... you want some beaters. <laughs> <laughs> I like them though. Shout out. Shout out. No, I, I don't know if I'm close to shout out. I mean, I, I like that he like, says whatever he likes. Like, I like that. Yeah. yeah <laughs> That's yeah, what I like. Yeah. I don't know anything about his political views. <laughs> he he said some real out the gate. Oh, is he out the gate hard no, 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 out? No, oh, no, no, no. This is just, I'm just thinking of specific. I'll co-sign that. Oh, he's not in the Māori party, so that's all I know. <laughs> I'll co-sign that he does absolutely say whatever he wants to yeah, say. Yeah, I love like that. that. I'll co-sign that yeah. much. <laughs> um, but nah, I feel like you can be political and there's different ways I feel like you can push like the things you believe for in other ways. I don't think you have to be in like that dry building to make it happen. Yeah. But shout outs to those who are in the building trying to make it happen. Yeah. And hopefully heaps of you want to get into that building and make more things happen. Yeah, because we don't want to. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> sort of it bags not. Over. Bags not is sort of the vibe. Let's talk about like slacktivism. Have you heard that term before? I have. But I've been too lazy to look it up. Yeah, what is that? Because I looked it up. Yeah. Selectivism is like this concept of like so activism is like going out and like doing it, fighting for the cause. Selectivism is sort of this concept that like you're doing it, but maybe a bit half-assed, or you're doing like the bare minimum you can do to get away with looking like you're a part of it without actually doing anything. Yes. Do you think any of that exists in an online space? It's an open question. Absolutely. Like, for sure. There are so many people, and um, we, we talked about this before, but it was Black Lives Matter, and that was probably where I saw it the most. Um, yeah. And I think people were also sort of talking about it themselves at the time, like posting black squares or resharing posts, and it was kind of like... Um, I think the reason why that example sticks out in my mind so much is because very soon after there was Ihu yeah. and I, I knew in my heart that those people that would attend the Black Lives Matter protests and the people that would reshare all the Black Lives Matter posts would not be at the Ihu protest. And they weren't. And you see it because it's like, how is it that the entirety of Queen Street or like across our entire country, you have thousands of people rallying for Black Lives Matter, which is incredible. Yeah. But then you have Ihumata and it's like... In our backyard, eh? Yeah, exactly. It's like a tiny little crowd. Um, I think that's a quite... Uh, it was like a visual way for me to see what the extent of people's activism actually means. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not to say that uh, not being fully engaged in activism is like you're an awful person or anything like that. It's just kind of, um, it's always disappointing because you always wish that everyone wanted as badly as you for our world to be better for everyone. Mm. But not everyone does. Yeah. I feel like I'm guilty of selectivism sometimes. Or maybe it's like, is it like selectivism more like with intention, like you want to look like you're woke but you're just, is that more... To me, that I, I don't know. Like, I didn't write the words, so I don't want to. <laughs> I just googled it. Shout outs to whoever wrote it. But like, I think selectivism is like taking part in these political movements. In my opinion, yeah. out of more fear that it'll look bad if you don't, versus oh, genuinely right. caring about a couple. Oh right, right. Yeah. The heart's not in it. I. That's sort of how I mm. maybe define it. I think sometimes I've felt pressured at times to have the appearance of like being involved in something I didn't fully understand at that point. Um, and it's been at different points and it's just like, you see everyone is on this kaupapa and I'll be sitting there like, am I a terrible person for not understanding what's going on right now? Or sometimes it's even just that uh, I don't have the capacity to take it in at that time, but I still want to 
feel that I'm there. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's a... To me, it's not a malicious thing, but it's more a, it's the lack of um, involvement that is the issue. Yeah. yeah. Like the disconnect. Talk, no walk. Mm. Sorry. Oh, like just all talk, no walk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like pretty much, eh? Like you're just sharing it, but you're not actually going to anything. Or well, not anything, but it's just not... Yeah. It's interesting, eh? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm real, like, unsettled on it, because I think also, like, I don't want to undermine the work that, like, our disabled whanau do, you know, maybe they can't get out and, like, mm. join a protest or whatever, and I do think in some situations, like, the online all can be enough, but yeah. I also... Like, there can be a wānanga happening online as well, eh? Like, yeah. wānanga forums kind of buzz. Yeah, but, like, I, for example, like, I've made videos online before about, like, te reo Māori revitalisation or te reo Māori being in schools, and then, like, people from my high school who are openly racist on their Facebook newsfeed have reposted them. <laughs> and I'm like, in what world, babe? Like, <laughs> yeah. in what yeah. world? Yeah. And that's where I'm like, that's interesting, because they know it looks good to repost it versus yeah. genuinely, like... I remember there was a girl in my school, she did... Uh, she was Pākehā, raised in Africa, um, and she did her, like, we were doing speeches and she did her speech on cultural appropriation. Um, and then after we'd graduated, one of my friends who's Māori was posting about, um, she posted a joke about Pākehā people mispronouncing Māori words. And this girl that did her speech on cultural appropriation was like, well, maybe that's why your language is dying, because you're always laughing at us. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, what happened to your speech? <laughs> <laughs> she forgot it. <laughs> she skipped it. I guess you didn't keep your notes on your hand. Like, people can be so different in person to how they present themselves online. I think she was a weird case, though, because usually people <laughs> are less, like, publicly like that. I don't know, maybe bad I'm wrong. Bad vibes, eh? They yeah. usually keep their bad vibes to yeah. themselves like behind closed doors. actively all. racist. It's like, whoa, that's like <laughs> neck level, man. Like, impressive. <laughs> Impressively it's racist. Sort of a pioneer for the racists, because <laughs> yeah. that's quite like, unheard wow. of. The ingenuity is <laughs> incredible. We, we kind of, we, we just talked about, you know, talking on politics up, Facebook. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I want to get there. Let's get there. I, I find Facebook now, I mean, I don't know about anyone else, I feel like the Rangatahi listeners will agree with this, I hope, that Facebook is turning into a bit of a Toritiko Marima Tapiri. Okay, like, it's that Rianga, eh? And then we're kind of, like, we're, like me and the Gen Z, we kind of, like, everyone else is kind of hanging out on Instagram, but I find, I find, especially on my newsfeed and stuff, Facebook is where I like to, not troll, but I like to <laughs> wānanga a bit more with, Non like minded oh, people. Is that what we call Totohi Tohi? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a debate, you know, we're talking about opinions, but I mean, do you two hang out on Facebook sometimes in the comment section for certain things? I'm sure that Facebook actively promotes One News articles to me that are racist. And, and New, New Zealand Herald? Yeah. Them too, yeah. very good ones. And that's Stuff. how it works, yeah, because they see that you engage with it and they want the, us to, The eh? goal of the, the, their code is to keep you on their app as long as possible and to yeah. keep engaged on it as much as possible. So, and Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it doesn't matter if you're enjoying the content or if it makes you angry, if it makes you sad. As long as you're with the content and contributing to it, that's all they care about. I need to stop. <laughs> have you fought people on Facebook before, could I? I still do. <laughs> I have. I will forever. What are the fights you're having? <laughs> the fights I'm yeah. having? They're about everything. They're about abortion. They're about um, Māori or speaking te reo Māori. They're about the Moriori people supposedly being extinct. Bro, I see those arguments. <laughs> hey, that's like their number one yeah. um, comeback. Hey, what about the Moriori? I'm like, bro, I don't even know who they are. Like, I am Moriori. <laughs> <laughs> and then whenever I tell people that want to say Māori Ori are extinct, that are Māori Ori, they just ignore it. <laughs> they just pretend I didn't say I, that. <laughs> like they're also left in reading. <laughs> I like how you two probably met each other in the comments sections before. Like. Possibly. I may have been backing you up. 
I, I, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Nick, Nick, when I find out we're fighting, no, 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 no definitely not. No. I only fight against. Uh, I go and look at the people I'm fighting. I look at their profile, <laughs> have a look around their photos. You know, oh, yeah, you look save like some, come back, see that, then go back. <laughs> well, you're doing a full roast battle. You're not even sticking to the copa, but you're like, <laughs> no, no. If I'm losing, I'm just like, <laughs> nah. Yeah. You're looking at the family reunion photos. You're like going all the way down. Just mostly their profile and covers. Sometimes um, <laughs> arguing with people on Facebook, um, it's not always about winning the argument though. Sometimes it's just about... Uh, Getting a message across or sometimes? Yeah. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be them because it's such a public, it's like a stage. And so when you have someone say something awful yeah. and then you give a reason response as to why they're wrong, there are so many other people that are going to read that discussion who may never have said something, who may not have ever even had an opinion that could be swayed. <laughs> Or just people that maybe disagreed or could have their mind changed because they're not the ones being feeling attacked. Because yeah, yeah. that's the thing with Facebook is that you feel personally attacked because people lose their shit. <laughs> and they're like, you're a piece of shit, you're stupid. And it's like, da -da -da -da. and it, this has gone into me just doing impressions of people on the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's so it's real. Like, um, sometimes it's not just about the conversation you think you're having with this one person. Yeah, it's quite different. I like it. Do you guys show, um, you get into debates and stuff on Instagram? We've found that different to Facebook? Or, oh. I mean, that's more like a, more like like-minded people. They, the comment, comment section is really on Instagram, I find. Uh, yeah, that's I think petty too. Instagram tends to be younger people. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe I just, don't engage with enough of that kind of content on Instagram. Yeah. I find that it's more Facebook that feeds me political yeah. content where Instagram's like, watch this video of pancakes Instagram's being Instagram's a little bit more shallow, eh? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. just like more likes and the yeah. Yeah, yeah. reshares. But I think that if you're really into that space, it probably would show that stuff to you, but it doesn't with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like hunt out fights on Instagram. Like I won't comment first on something, but I do have people like come at me sometimes. Mm. And so then hey, I, yeah, on your stuff. hard out. Yeah. And I'll like, I make a generous assumption at the start. If I have that emotional energy, I might do a little response, a little education. But if they keep coming up with the same energy, I don't block, I restrict. And restrict means they can see all my stuff, but they can't comment or interact with it. Mm. So it's sort of like, is that what happens when you restrict someone? Yeah, it's better than a block, because block they can't see anything. But restrict, I'm like, <laughs> you I'm learn. restricted in some people, but I didn't think that's what restricted was. You, I thought, you? I just see this stuff less. They're like, what <laughs> kind of comment <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> they're, they're close people. No. Oi. All your friends quickly like going on Instagram now, seeing if they can comment on your thing. I'm like, can I message you on hey, Instagram? Don't look, but no, it'll be changed before you go there. <laughs> You're soon, all back on. So. As soon as we wrap, I want to see if I can message you. I'm going hey, to be offended if I can't. <laughs> but yeah, I think I don't... Sometimes there's like space to like robustly fight people, but I prefer for my like, my verbal fights to be in real life. That's me. That's my preference. Yeah, because those screenshots hang around, eh? And sometimes, I've, I've, look, I've gone back to look at some things where I was like, man, you could have taught them a better lesson than you're a kaka studio. <laughs> like, you should have written this in your journal or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> close friends, that one should have gone yeah. a close friends. Exactly. Oh, I love a close friends post. I don't have a close friends. Oh, so you're just out there? Yep. Hey. Just raw into the world. Straight up. I love, I post on my close friends probably 90% of the time. Yeah. And then Instagram just, and reshares. Oh, that's cool. I don't know who to choose. Who's <laughs> deserving of my close friends. So I just thought, wow, everyone can just. I thought them. if the people when I first wake up and I do a video, if I feel comfortable with you to see me like that, <laughs> you're on there. That's how I've judged yeah. my close friends. Yeah. But I'm on some people's like close friends and I don't want to be. Like, sometimes I've been sort of dragged into the close friends and I'm like. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it's like, why am I your close friend? I know, we don't but talk. also, <laughs> what are you up to? Is there any kind of like, have you seen any kind of political battle or like scrap kind of thing on Facebook from other people? Have you, have, is there any that have really caught your attention? Like, have you put yourself into other people's battle kind of thing? Like, have you felt so strongly 
like opinionated on something that you're like, I'm jumping in there, even though no one has asked. <laughs> That's probably like, but really like major comments. Then, like, have you ever done that, or just the subtle? I feel like it's most of them. I'm just like India. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Like, laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I don't actually know what my thought process about it is. I think because you'll have the top comment and sometimes there'll be like a hundred comments underneath it and I'll just not read any of them and only reply to the top comment. So it depends. For Rangatahi specifically, like sort of trying to navigate the online space like you did when you were a teen, what like advice would you have to them in terms of like where they get their political info from or how they learn about politics? Like what would you say? I think that if they were anything like I was, that it's important to uh, consider how the spaces you're in actually make you feel and to trust your gut instincts about things. Um, if the communities that you're in online uh, require you to belittle or diminish other people or make yourself feel better than other people, then you probably need to reconsider the community that you're in. Um, it's really easy to feel like you're having fun and it's, things are just jokes or you're just having sort of lighthearted conversations. But everything has deeper meaning to it and if your whole life is making fun of things or making fun of certain people, it's probably not the best. <laughs> change your life. Yeah. Just change everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but it is important to just consider what do you actually feel about things? Do you actually agree? Or do you just want to agree to be a part of a group? And this is not to be like disparaging, because this is what I was like, but I didn't know because I never took the time to think about it until I was older. Yeah, hopefully. I feel like I needed to hear that. Yeah. Like, get out of those uh, community studios. You're like writing it down. I'm not on hate pages, by the way, that's not also oh. I'm just looking. Really glad to hear yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. She's on New Zealand Hero. I think, I mean, obviously, this is a huge conversation. We cover a bit, we start conversations, and we leave it to you, Etifano, listening to continue this on. We can't be everything all the time, <laughs> but we can be something sometimes. Also, just want to say, very beautiful Moko Kauai. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah, for the audio listeners who aren't seeing it, you're missing out. Wasted opportunity. Yeah, wasted opportunity. <laughs> okay. The photos. Well, that's been this episode of Tuki Talks. We've been talking about social media and politics. I've been your host, Janae Henry. And I'm Tudio Schmidt Piki, and we're here with Kotatu de Fenua. Beautiful. All right. Kakite. Kakite, Fano. Kakite. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.